Moving on to circles. Circles have equations that look like this. What this means that you can draw them on a graph. And the center will be the flip of this. So if this is negative 4, it'll be at 4, comma, and it's positive 3, negative 3. And the radius of that circle will be the square root of that number. So you go everywhere, 1, 2, 3, 4. and you make yourself a circle. Now a lot of times they will ask questions based on all this. A lot of times they'll just have it x squared plus y squared equals 25, which means the center is at 0, 0, but you should know that the equation of circle looks like that. <coughs> Within the circle, it's just the quadratic, pardon me, the Pythagorean theorem again. So you want to know how far it is from the center to the point that's 4 over 3 up, and just draw a triangle in there with a right angle, and you're looking at 3 squared plus 3 squared equals, and so on and so on. So that's a, uh, a classic equation that you'll see on the ACT test. Greatest common factors. They'll do this a lot with a problem where they'll have something like 3x squared plus 6x over 3x squared, and they'll say uh, what's the equation equal, or what's one of the factors, or what can it be reduced to, and you want to take out the max you can on the top, so the top has 3x in both of them. And the way to look at this, if you're not sure, is to just distribute it. 3x times x is x squared, and 3x times 2 is 6x. And then the bottom is 3x squared, so you would be able to cancel and end up with x plus 2 over x. So that's the greatest common factor. We'll also say things, what it's the greatest common factor of. These three terms, and what you have to do is say what's in all three terms. Looks like there's an 8. Looks like there's an x, looks like there's a y. And if you divided each one by that, you can see what's left. So that's greatest common factors. Also on the ACT are simple and complex factoring. We'll do simple first. And that is a problem like this, which breaks down x, x, what multiplies 256 and adds negative 56 and adds to negative 1. So that would be your answer, x minus 8, x plus 7. And if it's got an equal zero, they'll say, what are the roots or the answers? And the answer would be the flip. Take negative 8, make it positive 8, positive 7, make it negative 7. If you don't know how to do factoring, you need to spend some time doing that. I would recommend going on YouTube and looking up lessons. They'll give you plenty of practice. Complex, fact, complex factoring is very tricky. And I actually use factoring by grouping to show how to do it. So you'll have a question like 2x squared minus x minus 6. And what I do for this is we multiply the end terms. And then we say what multiplies to 12, uh, but since this is a negative, subtracts to negative 1. And the answer is 4 and 3. Make it the other way so it's a little clearer. 
So then we rewrite it. The 2x squared stays, the minus 6 stays, but then we rewrite using the 3 and the 4. Plus 3x minus 4x. And it does not matter what order you put those in. And this is factoring by grouping. When it sets up with four terms, it usually works out. So what's in that? x leaves 2x plus 3. What's in both of these? Negative 2 leaves 2x plus 3. And then we rewrite. 2x plus 3 stays. What's all the other stuff? Must be x. x minus 2. And again, if it equals 0, we get x equals 2. x equals negative 3 halves. If you haven't seen that before, definitely look that up on YouTube. I have a few lessons there under J. Titterton 1, uh, complex factoring, and definitely know how to do that. Lots of area and perimeter, perimeter formulas. Simply memorize these. Watch out, make sure you're using the radius. So you have a circle, and they'll say things like the diameter is 10. What's the area? What's the circumference? Well, just don't forget the radius is 5. Then the area is 25 pi, and the circumference, also known as the perimeter, is 10 pi. Just watch out for that. Plenty of rectangular square parallelogram problems. If you don't know how to do a rectangular square, things could be pretty challenging. So if you have a 3 and a 5, area equals 15. Perimeter equals 5 and 3, 10 plus 6 is 16. Make sure you read the question. They're often tricky about asking for area when you think it's perimeter and perimeter when you think they're asking for area. And a parallelogram. The sides are the same. So if they give you 3 and 8, this would also be 3 and 8. And they'll do things like, say, the rest of this is 4. Then you would know that this is also 4. And actually, I'm going to change the problem so it'll look like something more like on the exam. And you have to find the height. In this case, the height would be 3 because that's 3, 4, 5. So the area would be simply base times height 8 times 3, 24. Trapezoid's been on the exam. If you want to memorize it, it's right there. I don't recommend it. I recommend breaking it down into a rectangle and then two triangles. And I will give you the formula for triangles momentarily. Triangles, and they'll get a bit sneaky looking at the height and then the whole base. So if this is 12, this is seven, area is one half, 12 times seven, which is 42. But watch out, so they often will give you a triangle, looks like this, and you need to recognize that the height is a right angle to the base, even if it doesn't look like it's part of the triangle. So this would be Area equals 1 half 4 times 7, which is 14. Very common on the ACT. If you've got any practice problems, I'm sure you'll see one in there like that. Last but not least, midpoint formula. It's a good one to draw your coordinate plane, but you do not have to. I draw the coordinate plane just because I think it's easier. So they'll give you a point, say 3, 2, and another point, say negative 1, 4. And they'll say, what's the midpoint? And you'll look and you'll say, it's about here. Well, that's right. You just add up the x's. 3 plus negative 1 equals 2, and you divide by 2, so that's 1. That point is at 1, comma. And then you add the other two up, 4 plus 2, divide by 2, and 6 over 2 is... Three. And you can see that's about halfway between those. Doesn't show up often. It's pretty simple. Just add them together and take half. That concludes part three. More coming. Good luck.